Online Attention Focus, Facebook and Mood, uh, presented by Yuan Wang. Thank you. So, sleep. Um, I'm sure many of us are feeling the lack of it on the day four of Kai. Um, so today I'm going to talk about sleep and its effect on online attention focus, Facebook use, and mood in student life. And this work is um, led by my advisor, Gloria Mark, and in collaboration with Melissa Nia and Stephanie Reich. So this topic of sleep is as important as ever in our modern life. Poor sleeping habits, such as sleep deprivation, have negative impacts on physical and mental health, as well as academic performance for students. Young adults may be particularly at risk for sleep um, disturbances and deprivation as they are online and accessible for interruptions much of the day and night. So previous studies have been discussing how the constant connectivity might interfere with sleep. While there's mounting evidence that IT use consequently affects sleep, there was a lack of research showing the converse. That is how sleep might affect IT use. So the reason why we care about this converse relationship is that if we find a connection between sleep and IT use, then we know that sleep as a variable should be considered in HCI research, especially when it relates to uh, user performance with digital media. And also, if we could identify specific computer behaviors that are present when people are lacking sleep, it could inform the design of technological interventions that might lead people to improve their sleep habits. Since people vary in the amount of sleep that they need, we're also interested in the concept of sleep debt, which is based on the cumulative hours, uh, hours of sleep loss according to the subject's specific daily need for sleep. And studies have found that sleep debt negatively impact one's mood, weight gain, and performance. Studies of worker productivity and sleep patterns have found that decreased sleep leads to reduced memory, cognitive functioning, and work performance. And for college students, sleep deficits result in lower academic performance. So before we examine the sleep effects on IT use, we begin our an investigation by looking at what are the impacts of sleep on college students' perception of their productivity and work pressure. So we hypothesized that students with shorter sleep duration the night before will have higher perceived work pressure the next day, and they will rate their productivity to be lower the next day. Prior research has also found that decreased sleep reduce attention and focus. So therefore, we hypothesize that students with shorter sleep the night before will have shorter focus attention when they are on their computer the next day. Social media use is considered lightweight, a quick break, and young people often report um, using social media for distraction as a way and also as a way to fill time. Since previous research suggests that Facebook use is habitual, we wouldn't expect social media habits like Facebook use to change drastically um, one after one night of sleep loss, but rather we would expect to see changes over a longer period of um, sleep loss, that is sleep debt. So we therefore examine sleep debt as we're interested in to see whether accumulated sleep, sleep loss is related to the tendency to, inc to increase lightweight activities such as Facebook use. So we hypothesize that students with, less, with more sleep debt will engage in more Facebook use. And finally, prior research has found that sleep deprivation negatively impacts mood. However, a study of college students who were sleep deprived for 24 hours showed no significant changes in mood. We're therefore interested in to see if longer term sleep loss would affect mood. And we hypothesize that students with more sleep debt will have more negative mood. So with that in mind, we conducted a, an in-situ observational study at a large public university on the U.S. West Coast from January to May 2014. 70 undergraduate students participated in the study. And because of the constraints of the login software, we only recruited Windows users and Android users. Each student participated for seven days. 
And on day one of the study, we had the students come into our lab, and we explained the study. We installed the computer and phone logging software um, on their devices with their consent, so they are fully aware that they are being logged. We then sent two daily surveys each day for the next six days. One in the morning at 7 a.m., we asked the participants to complete a sleep diary、um, for the night before. So they report when did they go to bed the night before, when did they wake up this morning, and we also sent a end of day survey at 9 p.m. every day, and we asked them to complete it before they go going to bed. On day seven, we conducted a semi-structured interview. And participants were asked about their experiences during the study, their technology use habits, and their beliefs about how technology could affect stress, productivity, and mood. And participants were paid for $100 for participating in this study. So here are the、um, list of measures that we used in our data analysis. Using a five-item Likert scale, we asked participants to rate how much they feel that they were under work. And study pressure that day, and how productive they feel that day. So this is collected through the end of the day survey. From the self-reported sleep time the night before and the wake-up time, we computed a sleep duration for the night before. Also from the sleep diary, we computed sleep debt using the formula here by Ronenberg and colleagues. So greater value represents a greater amount of sleep debt, and I encourage you to refer to the paper for more details about the calculation of the sleep debt. From the computer logging software, we computed a focus duration, and by focus duration, I mean the average duration of time on any active computer window before they switch to the next window, as a proxy for multitasking. For Facebook use, we combined the time spent on Facebook from computer and phone. Mood was measured using the Panas scale at the end of the day. Panas measures two dimensions of mood: positive and negative affect. And we created a measure of affect balance, which refers to the balance between positive and negative affect. For our analysis, we used、uh, linear mixed effects models using SPSS, and with the subjects as random effects, to handle the nested nature of our data because we collected multiple days on one person. We used the measure of sleep duration the night before as an independent variable for hypothesis one to three, and the measure of sleep debt for hypothesis four to five to examine the association with the variables of interest on the current day. We controlled for age, gender, workload, and deadlines. We excluded five participants in our data analysis as we didn't get a full set of their computer logs due to antivirus blocking the software and some other forms of non-compliance. So our measures are based on four days of study. That is, we excluded the data from the first day, which is a partial day, and we also didn't have the data for their sleep on their first day. The medium sleep duration for our sample of students is eight hours per night, and the average focus duration on the computer window is a little over one minute. And the daily total Facebook use is around 28 minutes, combining computer and phone. So here are the results. For hypothesis one, we found a strong trend that sleep duration the night before was negatively associated with the reported work pressure the next day. That is, the less sleep one had the night before, the more work pressure one reported the next day. For hypothesis two, surprisingly, the results show, showed the opposite direction as we expected. So the longer sleep duration the night before. The lower the reported productivity the next day, and the control variable of deadline was positively correlated with self-reported productivity. So this points out a possible explanation that when students have less deadline, they sleep more and they feel less productive. For hypothesis three, the results shows that with less sleep the night before, the average focus duration on any computer window the following day is significantly shorter, which is what we expected. For hypothesis four, the results show that sleep debt does show a significant co positive correlation with Facebook use on the computer and phone. So the more sleep debt one has, the more Facebook use one one has. 
And also the control variables of workload and deadlines showed a significant positive correlation with Facebook. So the more they feel the, study, the work pressure that day, the, and the more deadline that influenced their day, the more Facebook they use. And for our last hypothesis, we expect that more sleep debt would re be related to more negative affect, and that's exactly what we found. So the more sleep debt one has accumulated, the more negative is one's mood compared to their positive mood. So to reiterate our results, uh, we found a, a weak support that the less sleep people had the night before, the higher they report the work pressure the next day. And we also find significant results showing that the less people, the less sleep people had the night before, the higher perceived productivity the next day, and the shorter focus duration the next day. We also found that the more sleep debt one accumulated, the more time they spent on Facebook, and they rated a more negative app affect compared to their positive affect. Our interview data shed some light on the results that we found. So for example, a lack of sleep leads students feeling out of control and distractible. So as this student mentioned here, when I'm tired, I have no control and I get distracted left and right. Also sleep deprived students may likely engage in less cognitive demanding tasks such as using social media. As one mentioned here, it's easy to just scroll through Reddit, just mindless behavior. In addition, as sleep, less sleep is associated with higher work pressure, and Facebook use is reported here as a way to escape the stress of uh, schoolwork, this is also a possible explanation why sleep debt is associated with more Facebook use. So taking it together, although there's a growing evidence of social media and computer usage disrupting sleep, our study shows that sleep affects IT use as well. And we suggest that switching attention is not just due to the tasks or the environment or the interruptions. It might also be affected by the duration of the sleep the night before. And more broadly, our study suggests that the relationship of sleep and IT use can be bidirectional. Identifying a relationship in the opposite direction is very important, especially if these variables um, are reciprocal in nature. So in other words, less sleep leads to shorter focus and more Facebook the next, the next day. And in turn, more Facebook use and less, like, less able to focus might lead to longer time spent on tasks and computer, which leads to less sleep the next day. So while our study of examining the role of sleep duration on IT use is a first step, we encourage future research to look at the iterative process. So with that, I want to thank the National Science Foundation for supporting our project and our participants. And I'm opening questions. Thank you. Hi, Hi. Um, Andrew Monk, uh, Open Lab, Newcastle University. Um, it's nice to see uh, a bit of thoughtful use of quantitative data. Uh, uh, very, uh, very nice study. Um, I wondered what your future plans with that were are. I was thinking about that diagram that you put up at the end. Uh, it looks like a path analysis to me. Mm -hmm. If you could, um, if you could get your um, sample size up a bit, I'm sure that you could do some really interesting statistical analyses to, to see how these, how, you know, where, where the variance is moving in, a, in, in various models like that. And um, I think another thing that um, would be very interesting, and uh, I wonder whether you, again, whether you've got any plans, would be to look at uh, more kind of out, uh, more sort of grander output um, variable like well-being, uh, some kind of measure of well-being. I mean, you've got the affect measure, which you can think of as a kind of, that's the big picture, are people happy or not? But maybe there are, I mean, there are, I'm sure there are good measures of well-being that you could use as well. Uh, do you plan to take this on with a larger sample, or is, yeah, this, is this the beginning or the end? Or? So um, this data is collected back in 2014. We do have other types of well-being measures, such as stress. So we actually measured their um, stress using a heart rate monitor throughout the day, which we haven't been able to incorporate into this particular study. But I think you did point out a 
very mm. you know applicable future direction. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, quick question. I am curious as to whether you needed to do the surveys about the sleep duration. Could you have used the logging of the devices as a proxy for sleep duration since presumably people aren't running applications in their sleep? Yes, actually, in our previous study, we actually did use um, the ending the later timestamps of the phone and the computer and their heart rate variable heart rate data as their um, sleep data but we also sometimes during interviews participants say oh i thought i'm done for the day and and then you know something happened i am up again so this time we deliberately asked when did they go to bed and when did they um, wake up and we from the literature we found that those sleep diaries are actually really accurate so this time we actually used the sleep diaries. But as you said, we can actually triangulate both data sources. Yeah, and I was wondering, did you find it, did you see any occurrences where people thought they slept more than they did when you, when you compared that with the logs of their uh, devices? We haven't, but, but yeah, it would be interesting to look at that. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, my name is Zinit Rodolfo. I'm from the New University of Lisbon. So uh, congratulations for your work. I think it's very meaningful uh, on our days uh, working on this subject. And uh, I was just wondering uh, if there's, so you made a, a perfect analysis of what's going on. Um, and this looks like it is a cycle, like uh, using Facebook and, that, and then I cannot, then I, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to sleep because I'm stressed. I will, fa I will Facebook to relax and then on, on the other day I, I will, uh, so it's like a, a cycle that doesn't get interrupted is there any way to interrupt this cycle? Do you have to, any to, to cut this cycle? Be cut it, this it, it becomes like a cycle, right? Uh, if there's any idea on, of future work that could yes, so that's work why, on that's, a solution. That's part of the reason why we're motivated to do the study. Um, that is to first identify, you know, um, students' technological behaviors or habits that might indicate that they had less sleep. So now we found that they're, with less sleep, they're more likely to focus less on the computer and more Facebook use. So for the future study, we can, you know, based on that, to introduce certain intervention. So we haven't done any of that right now, but, you know, it would be, that would be a starting point to sort of intervene if people are constantly going back to check Facebook or not being able to focus, we could, you know, sort of nudge them to take a rest right now to, you know, as, as a way to sort of intervene. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Let's thank our speaker again.